Hey, so what is going on everyone? It is me, Mr. Mario, and today I'm going to be showing you all how you can install a Xeno mod chip in a Nintendo GameCube. If you would like to know more about this mod chip itself or the install before or after or during this video, I would highly recommend checking out my friend Dopeswanner's channel here on YouTube. He actually has a few videos or one of them he did cover a lot about the features of this mod chip that it has through his series Mod Chip Wiki, which I'll link a episode to down below in the description, and he even installed one of these in his own GameCube on live stream, so I'd recommend checking those out as well too. But if you're here for the tutorial, you can go ahead and continue. Now if you look on on screen you'll see the GameCube I have in pieces right now and I'm going to list on screen the tools that I used and that I would recommend for this install. The basic things that you're going to need is the GameCube console itself, a security bit to open up the GameCube, uh, a good set of tools to open up and take off everything, and then of course you know all the necessary soldering things and the mod chip. Now, I'm not going to be showing you all how to take apart the GameCube, so this will assume that you already have it open, but trust me, it's quite easy to do, and if you need any help with it, I actually used iFixit's guide, so I will link that guide down below in the description, and you can check it out. But what we're going to need to do is we need to get the laser and the drive assembly off of there, because this mod chip solders directly to the back of the drive assembly. So first off, when you have your GameCube opened up and everything like this, go ahead and unscrew all the screws, and before before you take off your drive assembly, I would recommend using a piece of paper just to cover up and sort of protect the laser itself. What I do here is I just take a piece of paper that I cut off, kind of slide it right there, and then put two pieces of electrical tape onto the drive board itself right there where the disc would sit on top of, because what you need to do is you're going to need to flip this drive assembly upside down, and you really don't want to be touching the laser and moving it all across your desk and everything like that. Next up, what you want to do is go ahead, take off the drive assembly, remove the metal shielding that is attached to it, and then flip everything upside down, and you want to go ahead and secure the mod chip. So I'm going to put here on screen how the mod chip is supposed to look installed and where it's supposed to be placed, so you could pause it. However, I also recommend looking down in the description where I'm going to link a PDF file that shows where to install this and the points to hit. So what you want to do is you just want to make sure it lines up really well, and then I really, really recommend using electrical tape to tape it down so it's not jiggling around everywhere because you really don't want to chance this. Now that you have the mod chip lined up and secured, there's two things I recommend you do. First off, take some Q-tips and clean up all the points with really good alcohol. So I use 91% isopropyl alcohol to clean up the points. And then after that, also use another Q-tip to flux all the points. Now I use liquid flux that I got from Radio Shack. What this does is it creates a stronger bond when you solder everything together, but it also makes soldering a lot easier. So I highly recommend doing this because with any soldering job, if you you can make it easier, it's going to be a lot better for you and the hardware. Now that you have everything fluxed up and ready to go, what you want to go ahead and do is take your soldering iron that is already hot and prepared, and then take your solder and start soldering. Now the best thing that I do, because this is a quick solder board, is I put it down on the board itself right here, so I put it directly to the drive assembly, I'm not using wires or anything, and then there's going to be little holes, so I'm also going to put the diagram on screen right here of what points you are supposed to hit. But what I recommend doing is for all the holes that only have one solder, solder points that are annotated with a red mark, uh, you could pretty much just easily fill in the holes with solder and you'll be good to go. Now with the other points that have one hole but two points that you need to solder, you need to be very careful to solder each point directly. Do not glob a bunch of solder in there and do not just combine those two points together because you do not want to short any points. So with the bigger points that have two solder points you need to hit, go ahead keep those separate, but the other ones where it's just one solder point, you could really just fill in the hole and it will be easy enough. Now I'm not showing it right here, but one thing I would really recommend doing because this is what you have to do is when you are soldering, make sure you know you fill out the point so there's going to be the quick solder board and make sure the solder gets down below so it is able to touch the point on the drive assembly, but also kind of glob the solder a little bit. Don't go overwhelming with it, but glob it a little bit to the point where it is nice and shiny and that you're able to have some you know nice round globs on top of the quick solder board itself. Reason being is if you fill in the holes, that's fine. However, all you're doing is filling in holes. And that's actually one issue I had with this install. I had filled in everything, and what happened was when I hooked it up, the mod chip was not powering on or working. So what you need to do is there are silver points that are next to all of these right here on the mod chip. 
you pretty much just need to you know fill out the space that is required right there for the points to get down below and then you need to also use the solder and just glob some solder on the actual silver points that are on the mod chip itself that way you'll be able to directly connect the drive assembly to the mod chip and then also connect you know that using solder to the point on the mod chip itself so everything is able to you know actually work in there and give you power. So this right here is what your mod chip should look like after you complete everything. As you can see all the points out there are nice and round and shiny. Everything's making a proper connection. The holes that can be filled in have already been filled in. The other ones have been separated so everything is fine there and you have the gloss on the top of the chip so that way everything is making a proper connection and you'll be good to go. So now what I do right here is I just take two strips of electrical tape and I make sure that I insulate the chip really well. So you just put one on one half, one on the other half so that way the chip itself is not making direct contact with the shielding or anything like that. And then what you can do is now partially put your GameCube back together to test it out. So what I recommend doing is partially put your GameCube back together. Make sure the front panel is on there, the power supply is there, and the drive assembly is on top, and then just hook it up to power and audio video. Now you want to look at the back of the GameCube and then turn it on. If you look at where the ribbon is, you're going to see a red LED and it should flash once. After it flashes, it should change colors. It should either change green or orange depending on what variant of chip you have. As long as it does that, you are good to go and your chip is working successfully. Now we're going to just bench test an actual game. So as you can see right here, I have Resident Evil on the GameCube. Now you all might be asking why I'm doing this. This GameCube I'm modding is actually a Japanese GameCube, so no American games work on there. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my American game and I'm going to try it on my GameCube. And just like that, you just need to go ahead and push those two little things down, turn on the GameCube, and if it starts spinning up and it reads the game, that means that your GameCube has been successfully modified. So that way you can try it with either an out of region game Game, or you can try a backup copy of a game that you have. And now here is the poorly recorded proof. As you can see, I turn on the GameCube right here and I'm proving to you all that this is a Japanese console and it is about to play an American game. So I just turn it on, you see the Japanese letters, that's just to prove that this is an out of region GameCube. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to show you all the game booting up right here. So again, Japanese console, American game, and you're going to see it successfully boot up a copy of Resident Evil right here instead of Biohazard. Anyways, that is all for this tutorial. So as you can see, we have successfully installed the Xeno mod chip in the GameCube itself. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. I hope this video helped some of you all out.